Hello and welcome to the Under Center podcast. I'm your host, Dara Mar, and I am joined by the Bebop and Rocksteady to my shredder, Fionn Malloy and Jake Woolhead. Lads, how are we today? Very yeah, excited. Absolutely, absolutely uh, very excited about having Coach on the show. Excellent. That is right. That's right. I must say also, the show that you did earlier on this week, very proud, did a great job. Uh, so happy that you guys could look after the show What in my brief absence. But enough small talk because we have a big show today. We have a very special guest on to talk some football. He is the special teams coordinator with the Hamilton Tiger Cats and, of course, Sky Sports NFL analyst Jeff Reinbold. Jeff, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us today. Uh, we can see that's quite sunny over there. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. I, I don't know if you'd be able to see this. I hope so, but... This is our team plane, and we are just about ready to get on the plane, board the plane, and go to play in um, in Winnipeg. The, the team buses are showing up on the on the tarmac, so it's kind of a little inside peek at pro football. <laughs> Excellent. That is certainly the inside peek. Yeah, because, of course, you are getting ready for the start of the CFL season. Uh, you'll be playing uh, tomorrow night uh, against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers up there in Winnipeg. Of course, a game that Irish and UK fans can see live on BT Sport at half one on Friday morning if they like to. But um, <laughs> how has preparations been in training camp for uh, this coming season? It's been difficult because, you know, like the NFL last year, you know, with the exception, we lost an entire year. So some of our players have not played a game in almost 600 days. And, you know, with that comes all the soft tissue injuries and there were no. See Tuff Lawson there for a second. Hopefully he'll come back now. Just in a minute. No preseason games this year like the NFL last year. The craziness that goes along with this whole deal, but. You know, it's, it's great to be back coaching and working with the players and, you know, uh, getting our team ready to play. Excellent stuff. And, like I said, you missed a whole season during that. And I'm guessing it involved maybe a lot of Zoom meetings and stuff. Was it was it hard a time to sort of keep sort of players motivated and keep them um, on track there for the coming season, knowing that they, they've missed a whole, basically a whole year of their, their career? Yeah, you know, because you as a professional athlete, you know, your window is very small. You, you know, you don't do it very long. And so to lose a season is really tough on these players. Not only financially tough, it's emotionally tough because everybody recognizes that the sand in the hourglass is always, for everybody, always empty and, and uh, it never gets refilled. So other than maybe Tom Brady, uh, you know, it's a very <laughs> short window. And coach, going along with that as well, obviously that means as well you have basically two sets of rookies to evaluate, right? Because you lost last season as well. So that must be really tough on those guys who maybe would have made it on a bubble last season and had that one year of experience that stands with them in this off season, And now they're lumped in with all the rookies then from this season as well. Yeah, that's a great observation because we've had two draft classes that uh, you know came into training camp together this year. So that's a lot of young players and, and frankly, you know, we've got about a quarter of our roster will be made up of rookies this year. Uh, we had some retire retirements from some older veteran players and, you know, some COVID opt-outs. And so, you know, our, our, our team is a very young team. Now, Coach, the, uh, the Tiger Cats are my adopted uh, Canadian football team ever since uh, the infamous Johnny Manziel was uh, assigned with you guys there. Um, I do just have one quick question. Obviously, having the last season cancelled, is there a huge noticeable difference in the conditioning between the guys? You know, are, are they keeping it up themselves, but maybe not as much as you would like, I imagine? Well, I, the, the hard part was even the, even the local guys or the guys that would have come in in the offseason for the offseason program couldn't get in our facility. So, you know, a lot of them were doing whatever they could, wherever they were. It was a little easier on the American kids because a lot of our kids are from the South, Florida, Texas, those places. We're more aggressive about opening up, uh, you know, after COVID. But for the Canadian kids, the border is actually still closed. So when our players came in for training camp, they had to quarantine for 14 days in a hotel before we could even access them. Oh, wow. That is crazy. Well, and looking at looking at the um, the NFL side of things, and obviously their training camps are just this week, and we've seen a change in the last couple of days. So 
there was no pads to now the training in, in full pads now with, with contact as well. I, I'm just wondering, um, just from a coach's point of view, what is the benefit of starting out no pads and then run, going into a, a padded practice after that? Is it more of a conditioning sort of uh, evaluation for them? Well, you know, it's it's really difficult in training camp if you're not hitting anybody to find out who the, who the football players are. And, you know, that's one of the things that's become more and more challenging every year for coaches because the players and the players' association continue to scale back the hitting and the contact and practice. And, you know, football and it's, it's just the way the game is. It's a, it's a physical game that's blocking and tackling. And if you're not blocking and tackling, it's hard to evaluate whether a guy can do it or not. Of course, it can sometimes go overboard, coach, as we saw with the Giants a couple of days ago. What do you make of that whole situation? Uh, I well, believe, I, I believe. I'll tell you what. If I was, if I was Joe Judge, I would make sure my quarterback isn't at the bottom of any <laughs> balls That's... on the field. I, that was wild, and uh, I guess his reaction to it was kind of unique too, where he took threw the coaches off the field and berated the team and. Ran him enough. He went straight Vince Lombardi on him. So <laughs> it, was, it was interesting. I, I guess read a quote. Yeah, I read a quote to measure it a little bit and go, <laughs> well, look, we love to see that competitiveness, but like you said, the quarterback is the money man. We don't need him jumping in <laughs> trying to defend his offensive lineman. They can do that themselves over feeling. I read a quote oh, yeah. by Joe Judge earlier, and he was saying that uh, usually when players fight on the field, he throws them out of practice. But what do you do when your whole team is fighting on the field? You make them run laps, you make them do push-ups. <laughs> yeah, because you can't, you can't, you need to practice time. You, you got to get them on, you got to get them on the field. And I, I know that was the real... Oops. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's, we've lost him there. He might just come back in in a few seconds. Um, it is interesting. I, I know you guys mentioned it earlier on in the week, but yeah, that that uh, the the Giants players are involved in, in a mass brawl, um, and yeah, I, just, I I know Jake. We talked off air, especially that the the video of it seemed a little uh, of the start of it, it. It was a bit of a, a running back got through to the second stage and he got popped. So I kind of find it weird that it wasn't even maybe a QB hit. It was just something. It was kind of like a dog pile sort of situation that. Daniel yeah. Jones saw that there was a pile. He's like, I'm jumping on this and I'm getting involved. <laughs> um, I did see something that seemed like a miscommunication between some of the offensive players and the defensive players that uh, maybe they should have been going harder and, and the running back wasn't expecting it so much. So maybe it would uh, uh, might change it there for him, really. Oh, well, as a defensive guy, I can tell you, it's always a miscommunication. <laughs> These offense guys love to take that little, like, shot at the line i was just oh i'll continue my rep into the end zone and then when you're They're the defender and that. and he's running past you and he's doing this little fake jinx and you're going yeah shut up and you give him a little pop on the way boy <laughs> sometimes you need to remind them like hey just because you got the ball in your hand doesn't mean you're the king of the field right now they're supposed to do that they're supposed to finish yeah it yeah to yeah. End, yeah 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 no yeah works. no works so coach i know you're you're short on time so i'm going to wrap up and it's actually a non-football question i kind of want to wrap up the okay. the interview with um because while doing research for for this i came across a, a an interview that you did about um your tattoos and uh, you talked about how your tattoo represents a family and i hope i'm pronouncing this right amakula is that how it's called Amakula. um and amakula. um yeah I, I can can you tell us a little bit about that well, in Polynesian Hawaii, in, uh, every family has a, a, a family demigod, really, and, and the turtle is ours, and it represents um, a, a, a tremendous amount in our family. And I was hanai which when hanai in, in Hawaiian culture is when a child is given to another family because that family can help raise the child better or whatever. We have... Hawaiian culture is about everybody is responsible for everybody else, every parent for every child. Um, obviously, family is very strong, but again, when you're hanai into a family, that's a very significant thing. And and I got, quote, hanai after I was in my 30s into a Samoan family in Hawaii. And again, that's the, all of the uh, tattoo design is from my hanai family. Amazing. Yeah. 
And uh, I, I just because you mentioned that tattoos are, are quite uh, held in high regard in, in Hawaii and in Samoan culture. And I sort of see similarities in, in the culture with football, because especially with the tattoos, you could see as a coach. Um, so like the tattoo is to sort of like molding people who they tattoo to sort of see what sort of people they are, if they can sit through the tattoo experience and sort of you as coaches are sort of molding players to be better players and sort of progress their careers a bit. Yep. You know, it's, it's, uh, coaching is, is, it's a people business. You know, these guys aren't commodities and they're not X's and O's, they're people and, and communication and caring and all those things that, no, it, it's, it's, it is. A, it, you know, it, I know it's an overused cliche and trite and all that stuff, but a really good football team is a very close family, and everybody has a responsibility to everybody. And much like in, like I said, in, in Polynesian Hawaiian culture, you know, that we believe that every child is every parent's responsibility to raise. And in a great football program, every coach, you're not just the line coach or the special teams coach or the D-line coach, you're coaching every player. And it's a, it's a series of holding each other accountable from coaches to players, players to coaches, coaches to administration. Fellas, I hope you caught that. I'm, I'm sorry if it broke if it somehow. We kind of caught a good bit of it. Sorry, you, you were speaking about there that um, uh, a good, um, uh, a good, good football good team is a good team family. Is a good family. That's exactly what it is. It's shared accountability across the board, right? There's no, obviously, everybody has a responsibility and a role to the other, to the other, the players, to the coaches, the coaches to the players, the personnel guys to the players. But I mean, it's just one dynamic, and this organization here is, is extremely good about that. And you know, it's there's a way that things are done here that you know, no matter how talented you are as a player or coach. You know, you're held as a, you're held to the same standard, and uh, whether you're a rookie or you're a veteran, it's all the same. Because at the, at the end of the day, you know, you're, we're all robbing the same train. You know, we're all you know, as, as I have one of my <laughs> I won't even go there, but I, I had a coach one time say, "We're all pissing on the same fire hydrant." <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly, uh, and and coach, what we'll do? We're going to wrap it up there because obviously we can see that you're on a flight and um, you're obviously going to head on your way up to to Winnipeg for the game. So so best of luck uh, tomorrow evening. Um, we'll probably, I'll be honest, I'll probably be watching the highlights because it's going to be too late for me. But um, we hope to speak to you again, definitely uh, in the near future. Guys, you know it'd be a it'd be a lot of fun. I enjoyed it today. Thank you very much. Go Tiger Cat. Nice so, right. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Coach, right, and we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye. And that is where we're going to wrap up this episode as well. Although it was short, it was very informative. We really appreciate uh, Coach Ryan Ball taking the time to speak to us today. And no doubt we will speak to him again in the near future when he literally doesn't have to catch a plane to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how important we are. He, he decided he to come had on to, the show. He had to fit us in. Yeah, that's it. In. That's it. Got to make time for like the A show sometimes, you know, um, which is a, a perfect place actually to wrap up this show too. And uh, before we go, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you're following us on our socials. Uh, we're facebook.com forward slash under center pod. Instagram and Twitter are both the same at under center pod. Follow us there. If you're watching this live on Twitter, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search under center podcast. If you prefer Twitch, we're on Twitch too. Twitch.tv forward slash under center pod. Guys, as always, thanks so much for uh, hanging on today. Thank you very much for having us on. As always. And we'll be back soon, probably next week, with another show where we'll probably be talking about, I think we'll talk about our all hype defenses. I know we've been threatening oh, to talk about baby. that for a while. So um, we've, had a, we've had a bit of time to... to Get everything together, over. get that puck going and see what names come out. And uh, so you'll see that next week. But until then, stay safe.